family. It's Pastor Brett here. Today's devotional comes from Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. This is likely a familiar passage to you where Jesus invites us to come and find rest in him. This seems especially timely for us given the new world of social distancing we're living in. Of course, you know the point of our social distancing is that if we keep our distance from one another, we won't get sick. I know that for some of you, that's been a real challenge as some family members have had to quarantine themselves from one another. This phenomenon is not just here in the U.S. These orders have been given all over the world. For example, I heard from one of our North African missionaries that if you're caught driving your car without a proper reason, your car will be impounded. And yet there's another kind of distancing that's going on in our world. But unlike social distancing, this kind of distancing is actually hazardous to one's health. In fact, the more we distance ourselves, the greater the harm done to us. What kind of distancing am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about what we might call spiritual distancing. It's a desire to keep God at a distance. Now, that desire first began in the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve sinned, and it's been a part of our world ever since. And one of the main reasons I think people keep God at a distance is that he often acts in a way that is contrary to what we think he would do or should do. Now, certainly the coronavirus would fit into that category. And since we can't make sense of his actions, he doesn't feel safe anymore. He doesn't feel trustworthy. And we begin to distance ourselves from him. He doesn't feel trustworthy when we're in jeopardy of losing our health. He doesn't feel trustworthy when we're in jeopardy of losing our job or our business. He doesn't feel trustworthy when we're in jeopardy of losing someone or something we hold dear. We can feel the distance growing. Yet this distancing doesn't really help us. In fact, it actually harms us. Whereas social distancing keeps us from getting sick, spiritual distancing keeps us from getting the cure. That's why Jesus extended his invitation in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, where Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is saying to you and me who are burdened by life, who are laboring with heavy burdens, stop distancing yourself from me. Come away from trying to fix these on your own. Come away from trying to make sense of your life and come to me. Come to the only one who can take your burdens, who in fact did take your burdens upon himself when he endured your suffering on the cross, when he took the weight of your sin upon himself and bore the just punishment of God. There is no greater evidence of God's love for you than the giving of his son to be the sacrifice in your place. Therefore, God cannot be any less good to you on any other day of the week than he was on Good Friday. It is cosmically impossible for you to receive anything, anything less than God's goodness because of the cross. Paul reminds us with those familiar words in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good to them who love God and are called according to his purposes. In this season, which feels anything but good, which feels more like a burden than a joy. Find your rest in Christ. Don't distance yourself from him. Come to him. Lay your labors at his feet. And in so doing, find the rest you so desperately long for in him. Let's pray. Well, Father, we look to you and you only for our rest in this burdensome world. We thank you for Christ Jesus who bore our burdens for us that we might know of your eternal rest. May that bring needed comfort and hope in the days, weeks, and months for those who love you and who are called according to your good purposes. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I look forward to joining with you in worship online this Sunday as you stream the services. And don't forget to join our Zoom sermon discussion group at 11 a.m. You'll find the link on our homepage. Until then, 
God bless you, dear family of God. Amen.